So Jesus is in Jerusalem. And all the teachers of the law and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders are all trying to stump Jesus. And Jesus is not having any of it. And then, <laughs> I don't know, this is a week of Jesus just getting like, oh, I'm done with this stupidity. He turns over the tables in the temple. He curses a fig tree. And then he turns on the religious leaders. <laughs> he starts, so the scripture says, and calls it the seven, uh, seven woes. Woe unto you, O teachers of the law. And he begins to tear them apart. Now, you wonder where I'm standing. Um, right now, I am standing in a church. You wouldn't believe it if you take a look from the outside. You can see that at one point, this was a church where people came to worship. And from the outside, um, from one perspective, it, it looks okay. But inside, it's falling apart. And see, that's what Jesus compared the religious rulers to. And the religious leaders. It goes on the outside, you might look all clean, but in the inside, you're death. In the inside, you're like whitewashed tombs. Now, to the saying that to the religious leaders is probably the worst thing Jesus could have said. He's basically saying, you are unclean. You are death. You are ceremonially, ceremonially unclean, so you are unable to come into the presence of God. That's what he was saying. He said, you're trying to teach people, this is what it's... Uh, life is supposed to be like, and yet you won't live it. Inside, you are death, just like this church. There's nothing to this church anymore. They're storing boats in a quad in it. This was a place that was once intended for worship. This was a place that was built to honor God, and yet it got old and lost its usefulness. When Jesus went to Jerusalem, he wasn't going to talk to the unsaved. Jesus went to Jerusalem and basically brought his woes to the church. Jesus took his, the truth of who he was, the righteous anger of God, the wrath of God, the refiner's fire and the launderer's soap, and applied it to Jerusalem. And he said, it doesn't work if you have it all together on the outside, but in the inside you're falling apart. It doesn't work if you get all clean on the exterior, but in the interior you're dirty. It doesn't make any difference what's going, what it looks like on the outside. What matters is what's going on in the inside because what is going on the inside will change what's happening on the outside. What's going on the outside will not change what's going on in the inside. He said when you wash a cup, he said, if you wash the inside, the outside will get washed. If you wash the outside, the inside might not get touched. And that was the example that Jesus was using, saying that you need to get your life in order. You need to allow me to come in and clean out the dirt and the garbage that's in there. Jesus talks about taking out a heart of stone and putting in a heart of flesh. Jesus talks about repentance. Jesus talks about how... The only way that we can come into a right relationship with God is if we allow Him to change us. If we allow Him to bring life where there was death. This church is a pretty good representation of what happens when the Spirit of God leaves. It becomes useless. When the Spirit of God is not in us, when the Spirit of God is not cleaning us up, we have no value in the kingdom of God. But when we seek ye first, when we seek first the kingdom of God and saying, God, what it is that you have do you want on earth, I want in me. What it, the, 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 re, the reformation that you want to have in this world, I want that reformation to be in my heart. God, if you want to bring revival in this world, bring it into me first. When I think about what Jesus said when he came into Jerusalem, how he spoke to those that claim to be of faith. I wonder what he'd say to me. Now, I would hope that he would come and he would speak to me and he would say, you know what? You have your heart in the right place, but we need to do some work. I hope he wouldn't call me a hypocrite. I look at churches like this and they're all over the place. Churches are closing all over our nation, all over North America. People are leaving the church in droves. But the only place for real healing, the only place for real community, the only place for real growth is in the community of Christ. 
in relationship with Christ, in relationship with each other. We need each other, but we need, number one, in our lives, to allow Jesus Christ to come in, clean it out, and bring new life. Meandering thoughts. Maybe I'm all over the map today, but hope that's been an encouragement to you. God bless.